Are the concepts of transracial and transgender at all comparable? That's just one of the many questions igniting a social media firestorm over Rachel Dolezal. She may have resigned her post at the NAACP, but the discussion is far from over. And tonight, new information about her past has some accusing her of playing both race cards. Here's ABC Steve Osinsami. Well, I definitely am not white. Tonight, the former chapter president of the NAACP, accused of pretending she's black for more than a decade, responding to NBC about these photos shared by her estranged family, where she's clearly blonde haired and blue eyed. Nothing about being white describes who I am. Rachel Dolezal was born to two Caucasian parents, but over the years, she's changed the way she looks, and her story is igniting outrage, offense, and a national conversation on race and ethnicity. But she's firing back, saying she identifies as black. In an interview with MSNBC's Melissa Harris Perry. I have really gone there with the experience in terms of being a mother of two black sons and really owning what it means to experience and live in blackness. Even as a white child growing up in Montana, she says she's identified as black, but was conditioned not to own it. From a very young age, felt a I don't know, spiritual, visceral, just very instinctual connection with um, black is beautiful. She says as a child, she preferred to draw pictures of herself using a brown crayon instead of a peach one. But her parents tonight say that's not true. This did not happen. Not at that early age. This is a fabrication because we were very in touch okay. with our children as they were growing up. I was a stay-at-home mom. I was in touch with the teachers at school when she went to elementary school. This just simply didn't happen. She didn't ever draw herself as an African-American. They say she's as white as they are. It's alarming that Rachel continues to make false statements mm -hmm. and have no acknowledgement that she has been doing that and it's become an issue. The way she styles her hair, what some see as the tan in her skin, and her deep dive into black academia have many tonight suggesting she's an ethnic fraud. Here she is speaking at a civil rights rally. Like Maya Angelou says, you know, through all of the struggle, through all of the pain, we still rise. Are you a con artist? I don't think so. She walked away from the NAACP Monday, resigning from her leadership position in Spokane. Colleagues, co-workers, and many others in the black community are saying her explanations aren't enough. Your actions speak much louder than your words. If you didn't want to be a liability to the cause, you would have came clean from the beginning. You would have told the truth from the beginning, and people would have accepted her. The controversy blew up when she was caught on camera, unable to answer a simple question. Was she black or white? Are you African American? I don't, I don't understand the question of, I did tell you that yes, that's my dad. And he was unable to come in January. Are your parents, I'm are not, they white? I, I ref, I ref. She certainly has lived the black experience doing graduate study at historically black Howard University and teaching Africana studies at a college part time where she gave lectures about black hair. When it comes to hair, hair is for black women much more than just an aesthetic, much more than just um, an accoutrement or an appearance or a style. She's a talented artist and much of her work centers on the struggles of people of color. Some of her pieces sell for over $10,000, paintings seen here in this video. We don't have any gender diversity, um, age diversity or ethnicity uh, diversity. This is what we have, we have older white men um, on our currency. So what does that do to us as an image? It's part of our history. How does it affect us psychologically? Her reputation for being down with the cause is what led Chantel Monsi to write a profile of Dolezal last February for her college paper. And some of the answers were rather surprising. She did tell me that she was born in a teepee in Montana and that Jesus Christ was the witness on her birth certificate because she was not born in a hospital. Tonight, she's having to explain this story too. Yes, they were living in a teepee and were building the house when I was actually born. Mm -hmm. Even more details her parents say aren't real. She did not grow up in a teepee. It's become a pattern. It's become a habit for her, perhaps to misrepresent us as backward or something like that. Very concerning. 
we're just hoping that the day comes when Rachel will face these personal issues she has with her identity and her integrity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that would be the beginning then of a new chapter in her life. There was an ironic moment on her long road to blackness. In a lawsuit filed in 2002 when she was then known as Rachel Moore and was a graduate student at Howard University, she accused the historically black school of discriminating against her, claiming that the removal of her artwork was motivated by a discriminatory purpose to favor African-American students. The lawsuit was dismissed. She now says she's transracial in the way some are transgendered, a comparison that many transgender activists say is ridiculous, explaining that their situation is not a choice. That is not the reality of Rachel Dozell. Her blackness is a performance, and our transness is our identity. It's who we are. And we're quite often persecuted for living unapologetically in that truth. Back home in Spokane tonight, civil rights workers Dola Zell once led are saying she's still lying. That's my concern. Don't lie. Tell the truth. This morning, I was at the level of uh, anger that I didn't even want this woman to even land back in Spokane and even step foot in our city because I felt like she, not only did she single-handedly put a divide in, across the nation about uh, race and uh, uh, gender and just all, all these things, all these conversations that, that have been had. On MSNBC, she said she understands the anger, especially from black women. I would probably be in rage. I'd be mm -hmm. like, what the, you know, this person, how, how dare she? Mm -hmm. They don't know me. She says she's live the life and knows who she is no matter what anyone else thinks. For Nightline, I'm Steve Osinsami in Atlanta.